3D printing. Isn't it amazing if you have an idea for something that you want or need and a few modeling skills, within a few hours you can have that physical object in your hand. And I've been 3D printing now for about five or six years, having owned two previous printers. I started off with a Creality CR10S, quickly went to an Ultimaker S5, and that those of you that have been here before will recognize something different behind me here. Yes, I've just built a Voron 2.4 R2. So why did I decide to build a Voron? Well, basically I've been 3D printing for five years on the Ultimaker S5. And let me tell you, it has become incredibly frustrating considering this printer costs between five and a half and seven and a half thousand pounds right now. It is riddled with problems. Yes, it has a webcam, but it doesn't work. Yes, it has Wi-Fi, but it's intermittent. And it has a cloud printing service included with the printer, but that only works when it wants to work as well. Not only that, the way the machine operates is incredibly frustrating. If you cancel a print, you can't start again until the whole thing's cooled down and you have to go all the way back through the whole process of heating the thing up again. Incredibly frustrating. When the print's finished, the nozzle hovers over the part so it just oozes all over what you've just printed. And not only that, some of the software features are now locked behind a subscription service on top of all the money you paid for the printer in the first place. Seriously, if you want me to make a video about all the things I do not like on the Ultimaker S5, let me know in the comments. So this led me on a journey of discovery to find a suitable printer to replace it. And it will come as no surprise to you that I stumbled across the Voron project. Now the Voron project is not a company, they do not sell printers, but what they have done is designed a range of printers and open source the designs to the community. Unsurprisingly, a huge community of people have grown around these projects and these things are well liked. I think there's over four and a half thousand 2.4s that have serial numbers registered in the world so far. All of their printers feature Core XY kinematics, meaning they are blazing fast. They all run Clipper, so they are really configurable to just how you want them. And with that huge community of people that have sprung up around the project, there are a ton of mods to make this printer exactly how you want to do it. I couldn't resist it, I couldn't help myself, I had to build one. And so I started researching how to do it. There's basically two routes to go. You can either self-source everything and the Voron team list a full bomb for the printer, or you can go and buy a kit from one of the many vendors about. So I decided to buy a Formbot 2.4 R1 350mm kit. That was gonna take about three or four weeks to get here, so I got to printing, and printing I did. Seriously, it took me about two weeks of continuous printing to get all the parts done for this, and I made a huge mistake. I wouldn't recommend it. I printed everything from the start, and it was just too much stuff, really. But yes, I got to printing all of the parts on the Ultimaker S5, and I just about finished when the box from Formbot arrived. So armed with a bucket of parts and a big box from China, I set about building my very own 2.4. So join me as we go back in time to January 2022, and let's build this beast. Now, something I found really useful for building this frame is one of these. This is just an engineer's square. They're not very expensive. And you can use this to check that your frame is square all the way around. I've been doing it as I built um, the various uh, extrusions together anyway. And now I'm just going to go over it one more time and check to make sure everything's square. But it feels pretty good.
Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about mods and version control. Initially, when I set out to build this printer, I wasn't going to mod it at all. And uh, I was building a 2.4 R1. And during the build process, actually, whilst I was doing the frame, I learned that there was a 2.4 R2, which is like a second revision of this model, um, and it addresses some of the shortcomings of the original. Now, I had to make a choice this early on in the build. Did I carry on with the R1? or did I just print some new parts, order a few bits and carry on with the R2? And what I've actually decided to do is to any bit that comes after this that's a functional part of the printer, I'm gonna to swap to the R2 where there's the benefits. I've already printed all the skirt parts and stuff underneath, so I'm actually gonna leave all of that as R1, but the changes to the gantry and things like that are definitely gonna to go to R2. And part of that is going from two MGN9 rails to 112 millimeter rail, so it's a it's an upgrade on the rail i believe it's from the trident i don't know too much about this stuff anyway i decided to do that so i had to buy a rail and um, i went to Printy please in the uk and bought a rail but i also bought some other stuff to do some other little mods whilst i'm there and one of the things that i want to change on the frame actually because it's already built up this is relatively easy to change but is the feet for the guitar feet basically the new model changes the feet in the bomb for like these guitar amplifier feet and um yeah, this part allows you to fit them. So I am gonna swap over to this. Also, I did notice when I was looking at the printed parts so far that um, a lot of the parts had actually slightly warped on the corners. You can actually see here in this video, um, two parts, one with warped corners. And then I actually, what I've done is I've reprinted any of the bits that I think are crucial um, and I've used a brim. Now the actual Voron instructions don't tell you to use a brim. But, uh, and I didn't use a brim for any of them, but the large flat parts definitely, in my experience, if you've got a filament that is susceptible to warping, like I have, the Ultimaker ABS seems to warp quite a bit, then it's definitely worth um, using a brim. So I've actually reprinted a load of the gantry parts with a brim. I've got these bits. I got these bits and some, just some other bits as well. And we'll see if we use those. But there is an improvement, for instance, in the R2 on the front idlers. That's the R1, one, and that's the R2. And actually the R1, I couldn't get it to fit properly. So let's see how the R2 goes. But yes, there's gonna be slightly mixed print and between R1 and R2, but it should still be a good printer. Okay guys, so I have about 20 hours on the build of this 3D printer so far. Um, it's been very interesting and very fun to build and I thought I'd come here and uh, share some of my experiences and findings with you guys. Now, I know you can't really see it here uh, on camera because it's so big. It's actually taken up half my desk over there, um, but I will show you this in a sec. It's like I said to you earlier, it's morphed into an R2 build. Um, I have been buying some parts to do that from this place, Printy, Printy Please. In the UK, they stock a load of Voron parts, which is cool. And I was able to get stuff like the guitar amplifier feet from there and a few other bits and pieces in order to make this into a, an R2 build. Now, it's taken me a month to do this, but you could do it a lot quicker. Like I said, it's only 20 hours, but obviously I've got a lot of stuff to do. So I'm just doing this as and when. And I wanted to talk to you about a few things that I found personally with this um, that might interest you if you buy a form bot kit like I did. Now, in general, the kit is pretty good. I had loads of fasteners. I've still got loads of fasteners left over. 
and there's a little bit more to do I think with the mechanic stuff like the skirts and whatever but most of it's done like the the printer once I've wired it which is the next stage will function as it is and there's loads of fasteners in the kit which is really nice the kit in general is pretty high quality the extrusions are nice the motor seems to be good quality the a brand called moons which I've never heard of before um, although there is googling online there is some sort of suggestions that that might not be a proper moons motor I don't know anyway I think the, mo the motors are good gates belts everything seems to be pretty high quality with exception of the fans um, the fans for the tool head I found to be really cheap and I've replaced those with ones that I've sourced in the UK. The rails all seem to be good. Um, there are, there are uh, and sort of no name Chinese brand rails. I have bought an LDO rail, 12 millimeter uh, MGN 12 rail for the X because the R2 specifies moving to the Trident um, rail. So I have bought that and I reprinted all the parts um, for the AB motors. I think it's the AB drives. I reprinted all the parts anyway to allow us to fit those that 12 millimeter rail and that's something that I wanted to talk to you about um, I made the mistake of printing everything that I needed before I even received the kit and I think that that was a mistake I would suggest that you only print all of the stuff for the mechanical bits then you wire it up get it working and then print the skirt parts and all of the accessory parts that you need I think that it could you like me you could have a bit of an issue where you're sort of running out of filament a bit I've got a bit of yellow left and a bit of black left um, but I'm running out and so the R2 spec changes all of the clips that hold the electronics to the DIN rail and so I had to make a decision and I've actually printed those out of red ABS because I had a bit of red left and I didn't want to use the yellow or the black. I've opted not to put the bed on here yet. I think that might be a smart move because um, it's quite heavy. It's quite a big bed, especially on the 350. It is a big bed. One other thing I'm not keen on is the inductance probe. Now I know a lot of people have had problems with the inductance probe. Mine seems to sit quite low and there's no I can't adjust it any higher and to be honest I was only going to build it with the inductance probe and then switch to clicky immediately afterwards anyway so I think I'm just going to switch to clicky and not even bother with the probe I have got the um heart is it Hartex? I think I've got the mod for the Z stop to um, use a sex bolt which is a lot better than the one that comes as standard like cutting a pulley up and also I have bought a um a micro switch uh, X and Y end stop PCB because I don't want to use the whole effect one that came with the kit. I'm sure it's perfectly serviceable, but I have read a lot of issues with the Hall effect end stop. So I'm going to use the mechanical switches ones. Other than that though, this is good to go. It's time to wire it up. Um, I've already attached all the electronics underneath. You do get this bag from Formbot with all the wiring in it. Who knows if it's going to be any good. We'll see. Um, so let's wire it up. I might have to make some changes to this anyway because I'm going to use the Wago clips, which was another R2 addition. So we'll see how we go with this. But yeah, time to wire it up.
that wasn't too bad in the end. I really wasn't looking forward to doing the wiring on this printer, but actually it was pretty easy if you follow it methodically. Um, and I think it's pretty hard to mess it up as long as you follow it step by step. With that said, it's time to actually turn this thing on uh, for the first time. Hopefully nothing goes bang. It's been a few months since I wired this thing. It's been sat in my garage collecting dust and actually a few visitors have moved in underneath here, uh, but I don't mind that. Um, so yeah, I've just gone over the wiring again one last time and I think it's good. So all that's left to do is to plug this in and turn it on. And genuinely, I haven't turned this on yet. So um, let's see what happens. Right, you ready? We've got lights. Well, this all looks good. Well, this all looks good, doesn't it? Happy days, it seems to power on, which is amazing. Nothing went bang and everything seems to be okay. So I guess the next thing to do is to start looking at the software side of this, which is also another part I'm not particularly looking forward to, but it looks relatively straightforward. I'm gonna be doing it with my Mac and I believe I can set everything up over Wi-Fi, which is super nice. So let's do it. And if only you could smell this. That's the nozzle heating up for the first time and it stinks. Bit tuning. Now that wasn't too bad at all really. I was actually quite concerned about the software configuration stage of this printer build because it's not really my forte, um, but actually it did come together pretty easy by following the Voron guide. I did have one problem actually, um, which set me back about three hours, but having that community on Discord, I was able just to jump on there and in the end I raised a ticket uh, with the, the Voron guys and they got me sorted out pretty quickly. So that was super awesome. I've tuned the printer, I've tuned all the axes, the motors, I haven't done the belts, I have done the extruder, um, and this printer is about ready to print some PLA. I decided to go for PLA first because it's a lot easier to print with and I can just check that, you know, the printer is as dialed as I need it to be just to print that for now. Um, so we're gonna crack on with that. I have also done a bed mesh. Uh, I did one cold and then I did one hot. My first bed mesh was absolutely horrendous. And then I reorganized some things on the printer, changed some of the fasteners. I managed to get it to be pretty nice when it's hot. I think it's less than 0.2 millimeters deviant across the whole uh, print bed, which is awesome. So yeah, we're gonna get on, print some PLA and uh, see how this thing does. So fingers crossed for the first print. Um, so that was a bit of a disaster, unfortunately, on two counts. First of all, um, I didn't realize the hot end, I don't know if I can show you this, you have to just believe me, but the screws that hold the Dragon high flow hot end into this 3D printed part are too long. These are screws that came with the hot end, they're 12 millimeters. I've done some research and apparently if you buy this hot end on its own, it comes with eight millimeter screws. But in these kits like mine, this Formbot kit, they supply 12 for some reason. So that is a problem. Um, 
these need to be swapped for eight millimeters because there's just there's just movement on this nozzle which is unacceptable i don't know how i didn't didn't find that initially the bad news is i have stripped two of these when i was trying to tighten them up because i didn't realize they were too long and they're only small they're m2.5 so um they're tiny um two of them will come out i've ordered an easy out kit i ordered it on amazon next day so i ordered that yesterday that should be coming today um so that i should be able to get those last two bolts out and i've also ordered some m2.5 8 millimeter bolts unfortunately the only ones i could get today are posi pan i really want to get printed with this today because i've like lost the whole weekend so they're coming um the other issue i had is with this probe apart from the fact that um it has acceptable but quite a high deviation on its readings apart from that um it sits too low it just sits too low in the tool head it's incredibly close to the bill bill plate when it's when the nozzle's like touching the bill plate um and i think it, there's potential for this to interfere with stuff now i did i did try and modify this i tried to cut the top off it was still too long. It would have required quite a bit of messing around and chopping plastic out of this, and I just couldn't be bothered to do it. So, luckily, I'd already preempted this because I was always going to go to Clicky. Um, so, I'd already printed the parts, which is a good job because this printer, the Ultimaker S5, has completely stopped working. So, I don't have a working printer at the moment, which is a bit of an issue. I'd had the foresight, though, to print all of the Clicky parts. I've got them here in my hands. There's not that many of them. Um, and Clicky replaces the inductive probe. It replaces it with a magnetic probe or a magnetic, magnetically attaching probe, sorry, that has a sort of Omron switch on there which contacts the bill plate. Not only is this way more accurate than the inductive or inductance probe, it docks the part of the tool that has the switch on it after it's done um, the bed leveling program. So it's well out the way. So one of the things I'm going to do today to try and salvage something out of the last day I've got working on this printer um, is I'm going to try and build Clicky up. I'm just waiting for that Amazon delivery. I've got some super glue coming, get Clicky installed on there and um, hopefully fix this. But before I can do any of that, whilst I'm waiting for my order to come, it's time to rebuild the tool head so I can flip it on its side. And I might as well just start doing the skirts and everything that's underneath it uh, while I wait. So hopefully by the end of the day, all of the skirt stuff will be done. Clicky will be built, this will be fixed, it'll all be back together and hopefully we'll have another go at printing. <laughs>
and here it is a month after I last spoke to you guys. I kind of raced ahead a little bit and finished this off without filming too much, but yes, I did put the skirts on and the panels on, but then I went ahead and started modifying this quite significantly. Now, I'm not gonna talk about all the mods that I've done on this in this video. There will be another video coming soon about all the mods that I've done to this printer. But with all that said, this is printing very, very fast, accurate, repeatable results every time of this thing. It's been fantastic. Here's some PETG that came off the printer today. And this printer is printing stuff very, very quickly. That last part I showed you took only four and a half hours on the machine here, whereas on the Ultimaker would probably be about 10. So this has been a fantastic experience for me. Not only have I had the experience of building a printer entirely from scratch, much the same as I did with the CNC machine, but also it's given me the opportunity to learn a bit more about 3D printers, how they go together, how a Core XY works, because I had absolutely no idea. And ultimately it was so much fun building this thing. So I would 100% recommend it to anybody, especially if you have got a little bit of 3D printing experience and a little bit of electronics or mechanical experience, you'll find this thing incredibly satisfying to build. So what is next for this massive Voron 2.4? Well, at the minute I'm printing the carrying handles for the top. Once they're on, I'll be able to move it to its new place in the corner, replacing the Ultimaker. I want to fit some lights and a webcam and do a few other bits to it, but not too much. Mostly I'm just going to enjoy this thing now because it has been printing parts for itself non-stop since it could first print basically. As for the Ultimaker, I haven't fully decided what to do with that yet, but uh, current thoughts are to sell it and put the money into building a 0.1. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, throw a like down the bottom. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe because we're gonna be doing lots more content around this Voron in the near future. So with all that said, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.